Yo, Adam Saxon from Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. Hopefully everyone's coming out of their turkey coma from Thanksgiving in the US. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Gilbert Q's got a community blog post talking about how do you connect to SQL Server if you wanna to connect to the read-only replica or a secondary replica of some kind. The default connector that comes with Power BI and Power Query doesn't allow you to specify this connection string information, but the trick here is going to be to use the OLEDB provider or the ODBC driver, in which case you can actually supply the full on connection string and point it to the right item. If this is something you struggle with and you're trying to connect to always on availability groups of any kind, be sure to check out the blog post down in the description below. Reserat's got a blog post talking about quick measures inside of Power BI. And quick measures, if you're not aware of what they are, this is a way where you can actually get some of those useful calculations that you would use over and over again, like year over year, you know, time intelligence type items that are common inside of data models, but you may not know how to write DAX. And that's the big thing here is you don't have to write DAX if you're gonna use those quick measures. In my discussions with a lot of customers, most people don't know that this exists or haven't really taken a look at it to see how it can help them with their reports. This blog post does a great job going through and talk about what quick measures are and how you can use them inside of your reports. So be sure to check it out if you haven't taken a look at them or if you are interested and you really don't, you just wanna know some more about it, check out the blog post down in the description below. Chris Finland is the PM behind Paginated Reports inside of Power BI, as well as Power BI Report Server and Reporting Services. And he's got a blog post to tell you how you can try out Paginated Reports inside of Power BI without actually committing to Power BI Premium. If you didn't know, Paginated Reports inside of Power BI is a premium only feature. And to get Power BI Premium, a P1 through a P3 requires either a monthly or an annual commitment. And that may put you in a position where you're not ready to commit to that. And so he looks at how you can use the Power BI embedded SKUs inside of Azure to actually do some trial testing with it to see if it's gonna fit your needs and then to later on commit to Power BI Premium. So if this is something you're interested in or something you've been curious about, be sure to check out the blog down in the description below where he walks through all the details of how to do this. You can also find all of the items I've talked about in this roundup, as well as some bonus items as well down in that description below. Go check it out. Matthew Roach has a blog post talking about the positioning of Power BI data flows. So how do we talk about it? How do we frame our mind when we're thinking about Power BI data flows and how we want to use it? This is even more important when we look at the fact that Power BI data flows is new to the landscape. This was just recently released as part of a public preview, and a lot of people aren't really sure about what it is, how to use it, where does it fit into the stack, and Matthew goes through and talks about some of the common conversations he's having with customers with regards to positioning and trying to correct some of the mindset here. This is a really great blog post if you wanna get more into data flows and to figure out where does it actually fit in that stack, as well as just check out Matthew's blog because he's posted a ton of stuff on Power BI data flows that you may be interested in as well. So go check it out down below. Once you get through all those blog posts that Matthew Roach has in talking about Power BI data flows, Matt Allington over at Accelerator BI has a blog post talking about how do we move our Power Query from Power BI desktop files over to Power BI data flows. And so this is an interesting concept of where if we wanna take advantage of data flows, we can just copy that M script, move it over to Power BI data flows and have it archived over there that we can re-reference in other desktop files. He then goes through and talks about how you can fix up that Power BI report and repoint it to the data flows without having to just start over from the beginning, which could be a headache. This is a great blog post, especially if you're gonna get into Power BI data flows and you're considering moving the data points from the Power BI desktop file over to Power BI data flows. Again, all links down in the description below. 
All right, I'm gonna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this week, especially with it being kind of slow coming out of Thanksgiving in the US? Let me know down in the comments below, or if there was something I didn't include that you thought was awesome, let me know down in the comments below as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.